Doc, Doc, Mr. Apple, we had a we had an interview today. Oh, come on in, John. Okay, perfect. I was just making sure we're still on for that. No, no problem at all. Just take a seat right here. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to have this interview with me. I really do appreciate it. I know you are a very, very busy man, and you're doing a lot of things around. So I have a few quick things. They're about your new M1 Mac. So your new M1 Mac, powerful, powerful machine, um, top of the line. The numbers that you're putting out, the battery life that's getting impressive. Like for a laptop this small with a battery as small as it is, getting this kind of power and performance for a thousand dollar price point is pretty unbeatable in most markets. Um, the questions I have are in reference to the propriety of it. Oh yes, another one of those. We get asked that question all the time. What is it about this time? So the main thing I'd like to say is that you've already locked down your systems pretty well, especially with the iPhones having a proprietary chip since they came out. And then now it's on MacBooks. Do you think this is a better decision to not go with a standard like Intel chip like you have been for many years? And what caused you to make this new M1 chip? Us here at Apple are always innovating and we're always wanting the next best thing. Intel simply wasn't cutting it for us. Intel was making these chips, selling them to us, and then we would simply put them in. Well, that wasn't good enough for us at Apple. We wanted to make our own chip and have our own design and our own architecture. You may ask why. The reason that we need our own architecture is so we as Apple technicians can repair your devices more effectively instead of having another middleman somewhere else repairing anything to do with the Intel side. So that is one of the main reasons that we made this M1 chip because us here at Apple care about the customer and you being the customer, you deserve the best possible Apple branded experience possible. Okay, very interesting. Um, and the other things, do you see any problems or any unforeseen things happening in the realm of, let's say, like, any things that, like, computer science people do, or even computer science major, especially, like, freshman year, um, trying to install, like, a version of, let's say, like, Ubuntu and, like, a, a VM of some sort. Do you see any problems happening with that? You know what, John? I don't see any problems happening with anything to do with our new M1 Max. Our M1 Max are designed from the ground up with perfection. And we haven't copied our design from any other MacBook ever, ever made. We didn't take the MacBook Air design and just put a new board in it. That's not a thing that apps here at Apple would do. And I don't think it'll cause any issues because, again, Macs are perfect and they're flawless. And they do not cause any issues and they will never corrupt your data. We only paired the Touch ID buttons on the iPhone 6S to the iPhone 8. We paired them to the phones. Do you want to know why, John? We paired them to the phones because we don't want any other bad, malintent person getting into your device by putting a hacked home button on there. And so we made it where only us at Apple can repair the device. Because us at Apple, we hired the highest top quality of technicians and are vetted through an entire process and we've never leaked anybody's important data or done anything bad like that. So I don't appreciate you phrasing the way you did with that question. Okay, okay, interesting. Um, I do have a quick question though. Um, are you using an HP laptop? No, no, not at all. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not using anything, no. No, I'm using the newest, shiniest, best, New MacBook Air. Look at this perfection. Beautiful. Okay, I was just wondering, just a question. Sorry if I offended you. Um, other question, not quite related. Are you drinking apple juice? It seems a tad coincidental, don't you think? Apple juice. Apple juice is the juice of the gods. This makes up about 50% of my diet. You may ask, why is there an Aquafina logo? Hashtag not sponsored. I don't know. Actually, this, this isn't actually apple juice. This is just like a peach iced tea infused water. Okay, well, I thank you for your time, sir. Um, this information is valuable, so thank you. 
What is up, everybody? We are back with another video, and here's what's going on in this one. It could be an oxymoron, and it may not even be true. We're going to find out by the end of this video, but Linux M1. Linux M1. We have the M1 MacBook Air, which I have right to my left, which I'll show you in a minute, running Linux. So let me preface this by saying, I am not going to be dual booting Linux, I'm not rooting my device, and neither am I just deleting the Mac OS and then reinstalling Linux over top of it. I'm actually running the Linux in a virtual machine, which you may think is easy, but if some of you may know, and hopefully some of you know, the M1s have a weird system acceleration thing where VirtualBox and Oracle VM don't actually work with the M1. So here's how to not only remedy, but do a different way. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to go to this website, mac.getutm.app. So at this website, you'll be able to download UTM. So for these purposes, I already have UTM downloaded. Um, hopefully all of you know how to install the app. I would hope you're not that basic, but it's a DMG and that's the installation files for Mac. I'm going to cancel it because I don't need it right now. After you have that installed, you're going to open up the app you just installed. So here it is. It's pretty simple. Okay. So we're going to be creating a new virtual image. I'm going to be called this Ubuntu. And then let's do the operating system. For our system, we don't have x86. We have ARM64. So if it'll zoom right there. So we need to click on that. And then that is fine. For our memory, which is how much RAM is allotted for this, I have an 8 gig machine. I'm going to give it 4, which is probably a tad high, but 4 is about where I would like it. And then the drives area, we need to import a new drive. Um, that is fine. Just 10 gig drive, create, and then one more, which is removable, or a USB drive. So once you create that, you can click save. And our virtual machine is almost ready to go. So if you click on it over here, it'll pull up this huge page. At the bottom of the page, you're going to need to scroll down, you will see this. We need to find our ISO. Okay, so again, this is ARM64. So it's not going to be the same x86 um, Linux Ubuntu installation that you can find everywhere. So for this, you're going to go back to the same app you were on, or not app, but I should say page, and then you can type in the easiest way to get to it, I would just say UTM. VM, because if you just look up UTM, other weird stuff will come up. Go to the UTM. Go to Gallery. Once you're in Gallery, you can scroll down, and it says Ubuntu 20.04 for ARM64. We can click on that. Scroll down. We are going to be installing Ubuntu Server. So this is where it gets a little interesting. We can't just install the normal desktop version of Ubuntu. We actually have to install the server version then install all the applications and such for the desktop version over top of that. So it runs fine. I haven't had an issue with it just yet. Um, if you do, let me know, and I can let the rest of you guys know. So install that. Then remember where that install went. It usually goes to download, so it shouldn't be too hard. Once that is finished, you can go back to your UTM, click Browse, and then I think I have mine stored in downloads somewhere. It's probably down here. There it is. There's my ARM64 Ubuntu. So we're going to click Open. And then we should be all set for that. OK, so that's it so far. Um, now what we have to do is we have to actually install the server version of Linux, um, which is as simple as just clicking Play, following the prompts. Everything will boot automatically into what it needs to because there's no storage or even data in the 10 gig drive that we made as a virtual drive. So back to this. You can click the play button and this kind of takes forever. Um, so just kind of be ready for it. That logo will obviously disappear whenever everything is installed or not installed. It'll only do it on boot up so it doesn't matter. We're going to be installing Ubuntu server. Click enter. Oh, sorry. Click enter. Make sure you click on the screen because if you don't it doesn't initialize the mouse. So this part takes a while so I may have to skip a tiny bit here. Um, but this is a process. <sighs> um, in case you haven't noticed, it takes a long time. It probably took mine five minutes, and the VM restarted twice. 
So if you see that blue square, the UTM logo, don't freak out. It's perfectly fine. I promise you it's fine. Okay, um, mine's ready though. There we are. I'm sitting down. That's weird. Perfect. So it'll only be in a 4x3. It doesn't really matter, but that's just information. English. Done. You can basically speed run through all of this. Um, it'll ask you something in a second. Yeah, so that's all fine. That's all fine. That doesn't matter. Okay, my name. I will do Clockman2. Perfect. Uh, let's do Unix box. That sounds fun. Then, um, username. You can't use caps for this. Sucks to suck sometimes. JJJ. Ba -da -da, ba -da -da. I'm not telling you, but you know it's six digits. And done. We don't really care about open SHH. Okay, so if you heard the phone ringing, I'm sorry. I'm actually at my work right now, which is recompute. Fun, fun. Um, got a bunch of interesting things going on right now. Yeah. But this is going to install. It will take a long time, and you're going to think that it's like it's done. And then it's not actually done. So just wait for that spinning, per not parentheses, but backslash to finish. And that'll take a while, but then you'll be good. Okay. Yeah, so it's still going. Don't cancel update and reboot. Um, you can, I wouldn't suggest it, just let the update finish. It really doesn't take too, too long. Um, well, too, too long meaning like 10 minutes. And then after that finishes, um, it'll reboot. I have had to, so I've installed this twice. Um, the first time was for myself. The second time is because I did something stupid, which I'll show you not to do once it's finished. Um, but it will reboot and then sometimes it doesn't come back up and you'll need to X out of the VM and then re-enter the VM and you'll be perfectly fine. You won't need to do that once everything else is set up and again, you don't do the stupid thing I did, um, but after everything's set up, it's not an issue. And we are back. Um, hi. That's weird. Reboot. So the device finished, um, or at least I should say the update finished and so did the installation of Ubuntu server. So now um, we have two options. We got two dos, count them. First option, we can wait for this um, underscore that's blinking to not be blinking and then um, in turn open us up to Ubuntu server. Or um, we can wait again 30 seconds to a minute and then um, and close out. So it's uh, kind of up to you. This is the safer way, just to wait. But everyone's used fine. <laughs> I mean, like, if you just completely roast your VM, that's fine. Just create it all over again. Then have to go through the process of waiting, which would then in turn take longer. So it's probably better just to wait. And as I've rambled, hopefully yours is finished. Um, mine hasn't, so yeah. Let's see how long this takes. Uh, the job of technician. You could summarize it in just being paid to watch loading screens. I'm being facetious, but here is our install. <laughs> Yay! It is almost finished. We're not completely finished. So we are going to type in first our username, which for ours, or mine, sorry. Sorry, I didn't click on it. For mine is clockman2. And then your password, I don't think will actually show up. Yeah, you just type in your password. And there we go. Now, the first command you're going to type in is sudo apt install t a s k s e l. And then type in your password. Again, it won't show up. Yes, it will install all of that. Finished. Then again, sudo. And then this time it should be tasks l install ubuntu dash desktop. I think that's the correct command. 
I had a misspelling. I was just like, wait, that was the command. Um, I put deskyop, which isn't a thing. Desktop. And then that'll take a second. Make sure your device is connected to the internet for this. I should make sure you should obviously be connected to the internet already to even do any of this. Um, and it'll come to this screen. That means you've done a great job so far. So give yourself a pat on the back. You've done good. Um, this will continue. This takes an okay amount of time, not as long as we're used to waiting for this VM to run. Um, but this will finish. Once that's finished, you should be able to type, um, I think it's just reboot. It, yeah, it should just be reboot, R-E-B-O-O-T. And then after that, click enter. Then it will reboot into your new and ready Ubuntu Linux environment. Fun. So um, let's let this finish, and then I'll show you guys what to do after that. Okay, so that just finished. Now, again, like I was telling you, sudo reboot. You just type in sudo enter. Then that'll boot back up to this screen, which is, again, the logo of UTM. Doesn't matter to us. You'll get a bunch of white text. Again, don't worry about it. Let the installation finish, or the reboot finish. Don't freak out. Your PC's not ruined. And look at this. Look at this. We now have a fully functional version of Linux on Mac. Crazy, right? Pretty interesting. So again, you can Excel as you normally would, and if you went back in, it would just have to go through that startup process again, and after that, you're perfectly good. So I think that about wraps it up for this. If you guys need questions, just let me know, and catch you guys later. So guys, sadly enough, this does bring our journey to an end, but the war is far from over. Um, so it's not too bad. And there are other ways to do it. Like I said, you can install the UTM software, which we used in this tutorial. You can actually get it from the App Store, the Apple App Store on Mac OS, and it's like $10. Um, and all it does is just install it to the program files for you, where the other way, you just have to double click and drag in the applications folder and then you're done. Um, it's one step versus ten dollars. So um, that's one option if you want to take it. If your OS originally crashes when installing the desktop version or says something like um, app Taskel cannot be installed or something or it missed this install, you'll have to actually reboot it and then try it again. Not the entire thing, you'll just sudo reboot and it'll boot back into the system. Um, you can try sudo apt, sudo apt taskel install or install taskel, I forget which way it's supposed to go. You can try that and make sure that's installed correctly. Um, but the most important one, the installing the Ubuntu desktop, make sure that goes properly and there's no errors. Because if there are an error, if there is an error, you will reboot and then it'll boot to the same Ubuntu server which it was in before. You don't want that. You want to, which it showed on mine, there were no other white words at the bottom of the purple or pink screen. Um, and you just reboot and then it boots correctly. So pretty pretty simple and you can make a bigger drive, a virtual drive if you think you need it. Most of the time you really won't um, unless you're having huge applications that you plan on putting into your Linux VM. Not too bad, not too long, it probably takes about half, probably takes about 45 minutes with all the installs, half an hour preferably, um, but yeah. So any questions you guys know where to reach me, irecompute at gmail.com. Um, and I think that about wraps it up for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please consider subscribing and then maybe dropping a like as well. So thank you guys. We'll catch you in the next one.